this is more about this here thing. And let's get all my stuff set up here before this I is more. Hey, I don't need my own voice. Let's just break this out about chat. I don't really care if anyone's watching. Make this really, really small. What is up, 3D Medic? If you were at um, Hawk 3D Proto's Twitch stream earlier this afternoon, I released a beta version of these files. Those people. A couple of people immediately grabbed it because they thought it was cool, which I was surprised at. And uh, they immediately said, hey, how do I build this thing? <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick little live stream on first part of just assembling this and printing it so the first thing and i'm going to take it apart so i can put it back together i'm going to need my damn glasses for this because i'm old and blind blind and old old and blind all right first off you really should prep the body before gluing it together. Now I've already built this one, so obviously it's already built and glued together. But I highly recommend setting up each wing on the body before gluing the body together. It's just easier working on the halves and everything. And the first thing you'll need to do is take some sort of knife file or whatever and clean up the hinges the outside basically what you want to do is set it in here now when you put it on the body half pretend there's only half there the wing pitches forward at the hawk so the wing pitches forward with the head so the head comes forward the wing pitches forward that's the front it doesn't go this way it goes wing forward otherwise it won't balance right so the first thing you want to do is make sure that this will rotate freely and not rub too much. So after you take it off the printer, you're going to want to clean up all, particularly this edges, these edges, and along inside here. Now I just use this knife. I actually started using these more than the regular utility knives because I've been using them for so many years for work, it's easier for me to control. But you can probably use the utility knife for a file. But you just got to make sure there's no lip here right along this inside edge there, right here. Now, I was going to round this over. Not that you can really see it. But this is actually kind of squared. I do have a little bit of a round. The first few I printed, it started lifting when I make a true round out of it. So I left it sort of square. And you actually have to go off after you take it off the printer. And just kind of scrape it down and make sure it rounds over because when i did it round it actually made it worse not only did it start lifting but because it was not on the build plate it was actually making this center hole right here where the filament goes through not clean not as clean it's never going to be perfectly clean now when you print these things i should start with that when you print them the wings need to be really heavy the heavier you make them, the better. These weight holes, which has been my biggest problem, these two holes here for this, the upper string, are set with these settings, at least for me. I print these at four top, four bottom, 40% infill, four shells, all fours. Pretty easy to remember. At 0.2 layer height. It makes them these fairly thick and heavy. And what that does is with the four shells, the four um, the four top and bottom, it makes all of this from this taper on out pretty much solid. 
this is all pretty much solid plastic it makes this nice and heavy so it balances well the body and the tail you want to print lighter now the body you can't see it because i already glued it together but it's hollow inside no supports for any of this no supports printing all right um i print the tail and the body at uh two bottom three top with 20 percent infill no supports if you can help it if you get supports in here it makes it very very difficult to get it out as uh if you watched um hawk 3d protos video today he was having a hard time with the he had supports on there and he got supports inside this tube now this tube should be more than large enough you to take a piece of ptfe and slide it into the body now what i do and again i've already done it but i actually slide it in and then bring it back about a half a millimeter and then cut it you want it just that ptfe just small of this opening and you really i got a little too loose i might, might even need to uh, paint this hole up this seems to be working but it needs to be in there and kind of stay again i assemble this before i glue i usually pre-assemble it i made sure the wing and everything the hinge works and then i glue the body together uh, once that's in there the ptfe is in there you test fit the wing and the wing i actually take a piece of you want this to hold but it should take a piece of filament and slide right in there now right off the printer it most likely won't it won't get in there don't stick a knife in there don't put a drill bit in there i have found the best way to do it is to take a drill put a scrap piece of filament in Cut a little point on it. it needs to have a little point on it and slowly feed it into the hole now you don't want to go fast if you go fast it'll actually weld the plastic to the plastic and you're screwed you want to go nice and slow i didn't tighten it down did i and you just feed it in there and make sure you can push it through you actually want it to be tight because that's what's actually going to hold the wing together. It's actually too loose now because I've done this too many times. <laughs> I'm taking this thing apart and put it back together. But you just make sure you can push it through. And then after you've done that, and it'll actually be more work than that. You'll have to work it a little bit the first time you do it. You want to make sure you can just slide it in there and line it up with the next one and push it right through. And it'll hold. You don't want it to slide back out without some work. You want it to be a little tight because you don't glue it. I've designed it so you shouldn't have to glue it because I'm assuming this is going to wear out over time. It's literally just a piece of 1.75 filament. When you're done printing, you snip off a piece off the roll and slide it through. Then, once you've cleaned up this edge, again, you have to make sure this edge here is clean and smooth. This edge here is also clean and smooth. This edge along here and these. You want to kind of round off the top and bottom of this more than it is when you print it. It'll come out kind of square. You need to round it off a little. File it, scrape it. You also have to do it to the body. You have to clean up this edge right here, the front leading edge. Basically where it's going to come in contact. So right in here. In this pocket which you can't really see but this this front edge right here and this trailing edge here need to be fairly smooth and a little bit shy of this and again you take this thing and you kind of pre-assemble it without any parts in there and make sure now it's going to rub because you're pushing on it but make sure it's a pretty nice and there's a little bit of slop but not too much put your piece of ptfe in here Put your wing on and then just push the piece of filament through and you might have to fiddle with it a little bit to get the line up but it should go right through and pop out the front I don't know if you can see that 
pops out the front. Now you want to make sure it doesn't go too far out the front. So you push it back a little bit so it stays inside this recessed pocket. I'm leaving these long so I can work on them, but you can, at that point you can snip it off right there. You can even glue it if you want. You can glue it right here at the back trailing edge. Let me see if I can get this in the camera here. On this back trailing edge where the filament sticks out. It's hard to see. The camera right here. We're sticking out. I'm leaving it long so I can keep taking it apart and everything. I wouldn't glue it right away. I would make sure everything's smooth and flowing. Um, you will want to, when you take the filament off the roll, somewhat straighten it out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it big and arcing. And then you assemble both wings. And again, what I what I did is I pre-fit everything, made sure the wings are nice and flappy. And then I took the wing apart, glued the body together. And then reassembled the wing. You do not want to glue this tail on. Because then you can't get the filament in. <laughs> the tail will be in the way of getting the little piece of filament that you're hinging or getting it in there. As you can see, I'm trying to do it so you can see it with the camera, but I still don't think you can. I just knocked my PTFE tube out. PTFE tube goes in. Wing goes on. Filament goes through the PTFE tube. It pops out the front of the wing right here. And you might have to wiggle it around and Give it a little finessing to get it to work, but it will eventually pop out the front here. I don't know if you can see that. And again, you want to make sure it's short of that little recessed pocket. And there's the wings. They're all built. And it should flap freely. Tight both sides. And then you pop the tail on. Easiest way to pop the tail on, it's got a little recess here. And I actually used this when I was gluing the body together. You have to be careful because, you, again, you don't want to glue the tail in. But I use it to hold and pre-align the body when I glued it. But it just slides in there and sits. You really don't need to glue it in. If you want to, once you're assembled, you can. You don't have to. But that's the body assembled. And it should be all free and flappy. Um... As to stringing it, I have one all knotted up here and pretty strong. That's not really right, but I can show you with it. Maybe I can get it all knotted. You can use just about any string you want. I am using really fine monofilament fishing line, which has been the bane of my existence. Because it gets all knotted up. And this one I just have taped to the bottom because this is one of the very first prototypes. But I have found that approximately a foot or more, when you just basically put it in the, the hole, put a knot in it, glue it however you want to attach it, one front, one back. And then bring it up a little over a foot, about a foot. You can adjust this. It's going to give you a slightly different characteristic flapping. And I highly recommend everyone experiment because I haven't had enough time to experiment enough. But there are these hooks and the hangers. Now, you can put it through the hook and then set your strings and then just hook them onto the hanger. You just snap on. They kind of should snap in there a little bit, but fairly easily. And then you can run your string through the hole and adjust everything. Or you can just tie it right off to this. It really doesn't matter. I just made these because I'm hoping that it'll be a little bit easier to adjust the lengths. And you really need to get all four of these as close as you can to the same length. And my wings fall apart. Who's that? Oh, this one's one of the first ones that's way too loose. 
But yeah, when you string it, you want to make sure it's square and the front and back are as close as you can visually center on the wing here. When you do it, you want it as centered as you can over this wing. So I have this thing pretty well balanced. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close if you print it with those settings. So you want it, when you pull it up, you want it centered over this wing as best you can. And then you tie it off and either tie it through a hook, the hole of the hook, or like I said, you can tie it directly to the um, hanger. Then, this one had the, no, this was before I had the, I added the bottom hook. Then, as it's dangling, you're going to want to tie a string, and I'm not going to do it right now, but I'm going to give you a basic description so if someone's trying to build this, they can. You have these little, if I don't drop it, there you can see I've done a lot of prototyping. <laughs> you have these. These I printed at, um, I think I pretty much printed them solid. I think I did them at four shells, and where it's hollow and everything, it ends up being solid. Um, again, you really don't need a. Uh... Come on, hang on to the thing, will you? Um, you don't need a shell or uh, supports. It will be kind of rough on the inside, and you'll have to cut out the the droops. But you need it so the, sp the string can tie down through it. Again. You tie a string onto this, and a little hook right here, and it can just be a single string. Make it about a foot long, longer if you want, shorter if you want. Um, I have found anything much over a foot when you pull on it, this ends up doing the pendulum effect a lot and kind of hinders it. The shorter it is, actually, the better. I mean, you know, only three or four inches is fine. Um, but you kind of, I don't know, you want it a little longer so you can pull on it and it reacts. But basically what you want to do is add these. It should start out with it all strung like this without the bottom pull handle on it. It should be up like this. And you basically want to add one, two, or three of these, depending on how heavy the material is you're using, blah, 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 until it's almost level. You actually want the body... To make this work, you don't want it perfectly straight out. You want it slightly raised or slightly sunk. Because that will make it, when you pull it, it'll, it'll work better. Um, I haven't gotten them to work perfectly yet with any of these. This is the last prototype. Um, but I have found when it's slightly up, when you pull it, it goes down. And then it, it has a good action. And it should flap six or eight times is all you should get out of it. But that's about it. What's up? How you do it? Um, and that's it. That's the quick breakdown of how to build the thing. So anyone who was lucky enough to be at Hawk's video this morning, this afternoon, whatever time, depending on where you were in the world, but if you're on his Twitch stream, he started working on this and then bailed on it because um, it was just he didn't know what to do. Um, I released the files for beta for, I don't know, half a dozen people, I think, caught them. So this is for those half a dozen people. I will probably clean this video up at this point and use it for an actual tutorial with some text down here describing in better and add some. I did take some pictures building this one so I can make a handwritten style tutorial to go with it, instruction sheet, whatever one you want to call it. But at this point, I think this thing should work fine now. My last two units have worked really, really well. And this one should be even better. I haven't fully assembled this one, obviously, yet. I haven't strung it. But there's really not much difference other than the only different I've done is made the hinge a little bit better with the PTFE tube. And obviously, 
before it was binding, it would come up and one side would be like this and it would, be, it would sit sideways and not flap well. So it should flap well now. All the weight and everything's right if you print it in the right proportions. And I highly recommend people experiment. You want to print it completely solid, go ahead. You want to print it thinner, go ahead. You want to print this a little different, go ahead. But the only thing you can't do is scale it at this point because otherwise the PTFE and the filament won't work. Unless you can find a different way to mount the hinge, which is fine. Um, but for now, this is the size. I think I'm going to do a couple bigger ones. Because I think a bigger one will have more weight and give it more, you know, flappy action. It's up next. Um, but that's it. Uh, there's a couple of, like I said, there's a couple of guys that I know downloaded it um, today when I released it on release the beta versions on the Hawk 3D Protos Twitch stream. So they will want assembly instructions because they were all like, how do I build this thing? How do I build this thing? How do I build this thing? So there you go. That's a quick breakdown. You'll have to figure some of it out because obviously this isn't 100% informative, but it should get the average person to the point where they can figure it out. Again, the biggest thing is pre-clean, pre-build, pre-test before you glue anything together. Make sure the hinges work. Make sure the body and the wings flap very freely, but not too freely. And that's the other thing is you don't want these with too much slop in them because otherwise they'll actually bind from the slop as they go up and down. But it should... And I don't think you need to glue the tail on at all. When you put the tail on, it's easy. You start from the bottom and you kind of lean it up into it. That locks right in. Again, I, I wouldn't glue the tail in. I'm not going to. Um, oh, the other thing with printing it, if you want to make it look real cool, it's hard to tell in here. I turned my first and final layers, my top and bottom layers. Oh, I think all of them. I think all of them will allow you to change the angle. They usually start at 45 and 135, so they make it an X. I actually took my top and bottom layers. I know in an idea maker, I can change top and bottom only and leave infill. My infill is still an X, but my top and bottom are 0 and 90. So you get a nice, even, straight line. The other thing about that is it's hard to see, but, well, you can sort of see it. It makes a really nice pattern in the feathers and make them actually kind of look like feathers. When they were at a 45 and a uh, 135 or 130 or whatever, the hell is it? 145 and 135, yeah. Um, when they were at those angles, the, the, the feathers don't look as nice. It's a minor thing. I like the look of it on the bottom too better with it straight in line instead of being at angles. It's a personal choice. But that's about it. That is the Flappy Hawk. I can get one or two people to make sure it all works. Everyone that has it, what's up, Rover? Um, I will uh, release the files this weekend. And that's pretty much it. I will do a write-up again. I will say again, I'm going to do a write-up. I will put it on my blog, which I'm sure none of you even know about, but I've had a blog for a long time. I very seldom post on it, <laughs> but I will again, and uh, I'll put an instruction, a very basic instruction sheet for it to match this, so if you ever need a reference, it will be there. The next step is to, again, have a couple people prototype it, which I have now, make sure the weights and balances are all doable, and the thing sits straight, and doesn't like nose dive or tail dive, or, Stringing it's the hardest part, I think. Building it's easy. Stringing, putting the, getting all four strings the same length, tightness. That's the big thing. They need to all be the same taunt, or else when it starts flapping, you'll get the wing will it'll actually it'll actually twist. Because if one string's tighter as it goes up and down, it'll try and twist the ramp the wing and it'll bind it. It's kind of not the easiest thing. So hopefully it'll work. It's been a couple of months. Freaking, I designed, believe it or not, this design right here, 
took me like less than an hour. And these four holes have taken me months <laughs> to get those four holes right. And I've, I've almost been thinking about not having the holes or leaving the holes. Because if you print it with a different weight filament, if you print it in a different infill, if you print it, it's going to adjust the, those weights. You know, the weight of the wing is going to change, and that's going to either bring it in or bring it out. So I was almost thinking about also having, and I actually designed one, like a glue-on uh, string support. Something you could just run it through and just clamp it on, glue it on, and then you can adjust the wing pressure in and out. I actually built these, I don't know if you can see them, but I built these stupid things a long time ago when I was first testing it to do a balance test and see if I could balance it out. Right there, it's balanced, and that's right on those holes. And it should flap somewhat, so now, of course it's sliding around. But it flaps, it doesn't sit in place well. I got enough traction on them. But with those two there, it should flap. And that's that. So there it is, it's into that. Tip up, head fog. No clue who you are, but welcome to the stream. This was supposed to, this is just a tutorial about how to assemble this thing for those that have the beta. But now I will go on to just have fun and be at it now that that part's done. These are threaded if anyone cares. So if you need to stack two or three of them together, you can. You just screw them together. We need one of these. If you're going to use the hooks. You need to have two hooks, obviously, one for each side. They had two. Then you don't go. So, here you go. Here's the copper handles. They just screw together. They don't go all the way. I actually think I'm going to redesign this, but for now, this was an easy way to add or subtract weight according to how heavy your wings and everything set up. So what's everyone doing tonight? Anything fun and exciting? Now that my little blah 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 is done with. Yeah, that point that's when the numbers go away. So yeah. What are you doing the hook? I got another hook. Well, I got a blue hook. Oh, this is the big one that just falls out. But yeah, these are designed to uh, they sort of snap in. Um, if you know you have it, if you're all final and done, I actually thought about it and sort of designed them. They sort of snap in, but not real tight. And the plan is is that you hit it with a heat gun. Just squeeze it a little bit after you hit it with a heat gun, and that will close it down. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Walter's streams. Cool. So there's that. That's all set. Now the people that were begging for a tutorial on how to build the thing after they get the files this afternoon know how to build it. And I'm making my tea. I'm having a glass, a cup, whatever you want to call it, of tea. And it should be looking strong because it's been uh, going for almost a half an hour now. Yes, I use two tea bags because I like my tea strong. And I don't drink tea often, but I actually do like it quite a bit. So 
Every once in a while, I get a really craving for tea. Yeah, he's going to be... He needs to do it a little less. <laughs> he needs to go back and have a life. It's kind of hard to work, go home, stream. You know, you leave for work in the morning and you don't see anybody, and then you come home and immediately have to freaking start streaming. That's just too much. He needs to, you know, he's doing it Sunday. He does a Saturday morning. You should probably just do one night a week, like Monday, or I wouldn't even do Monday where he does Sunday. I would do like Tuesday or Wednesday if I ran. What I would do is stream, you know, do his, um, his new family country living stream. I would do that Tuesday or Wednesday. I would do my regular country run on Saturday and then uh, fun in the country basement on Sunday if I were to talk. I mean, it's just me. I stream randomly a lot because I'm out of work right now, which is probably going to change this week because it looks like I have a new job. So that'll change. But I just randomly stream. I don't have a schedule. I just did this because he stopped, and I was like, cool, it's a perfect time to, I was actually just going to record this, and I was like, you know what, I'll do it on a live stream, and I'll download it and edit it out for an actual tutorial later. But for now, I'll just live stream it. That way it's out there. Those guys that downloaded the files this morning can come here, see it real quick, and figure out how to build the thing. And that way I can get feedback because there is one very popular person who popped into the stream and said he's actually the one that got me to release the betas. I was like, I want that. It's like, okay, here. If you want it, down a little bit, blah, blah, blah. Before Hawk could even say, oh, look, Tom just released the files. He was like, I already downloaded them. How do I print them? What do I do? <laughs> it's like, okay. So hopefully people can have fun with it. It should be pretty cool for something different, you know. Getting tired of the shelf sitting. I actually, well, you can, well, yeah, you can see that box right there. That is a massive box, and it's just full of all my like mostly vases. I've designed and printed a lot of vases, and they were just stacked on all my shelves here. And I have the. Um, What's his name? Webbinator dude there. What's his name? Um, he was at the stream today. He's one of the ones that wanted the hawk file. Uh, they did the mini Joel and the mini Joe and all the like, they kind of look like uh, um, Lego characters. That guy. He just did the. Anyway. You know, all that stuff, they're gorgeous, but I just can't have that much. I call them dust collectors laying around. I got too many dust collectors. I printed two or three of those. I have a mini Joe and a mini Joel. And actually, I think I got two mini Joes. I got a little, little one that I printed. And I have, I have a full size one. They're all in the box. <laughs> I'm sending off to a friend of mine in Florida. She loves all that crap. She gets kids that come down and visit her and stuff. So anything she doesn't want herself, she just, the kids show up and they rummage through the box and take the crap home if they want it. I mean, I hate throwing them out. I won't throw them out. I'll leave them on my shelf before I throw them out. But, you know, somebody actually wants them, and they're not cluttering up my room, and then I can move on and print more stuff. Oh, you missed uh, Walter's stream? Yeah, it was just an hour. It was more of a, here's my new stream. Then he opened a bunch of stuff. He got it. Harbor Freight. And then tried to use the um, clip ring pliers, pin pliers, whatever you call them. We call them things that pull the clip rings out, the two little pins, and you squeeze it together and it pulls the clip out. Um, of course, those didn't even work because they were two dollar Harbor Freight ones. Tea's really good. I mean, once in a while, I just got a craving for good old-fashioned Lipton crap tea, whatever it is, tea. Good stuff. 
It's actually still warm too. It's not hot, but it's still warm. Oh, and if anyone else wants to see what else I did today, and, uh, if you look on Twitter, you'll actually see what it does, but you can kind of see. And at first I was like, oh, those eyes are too pronounced. But I thought about it, it's like, that's kind of the whole point of the picture, so I'm going to leave them that way. But, uh, yeah, I wonder if I can do it with my phone and make it pop. Will the flashlight work? Or does it make it too bright? Makes it too bright, doesn't it? Yep, you can't see it. Well, there you go, you can sort of see it. <laughs> Anyway, it's a little thing. Um, Tom Jackson, their uh, filament frenzy dude. Oops. Yeah, let's turn that flashlight off. Um, responded to uh, design prototype wine dudes there. Thing about Prusia being a uh, comet farm and he does everything and he has no one working for him and blah blah so tom took the dude's picture took a, a screenshot and then put crying spongebob square pants eyes on him on twitter he all cried and i took that picture and i just i didn't do anything to it i literally threw it into that 3dp rocks thing that makes lissa veins and Made Alyssa Fane out of it. <laughs> Just because it was funny. Kind of overkill. It's, it's kind of beaten, beating the dead horse now. It's, the guy is not right, but whatever. It is what it is. And it's funny. I'm sorry. It's funny. If somebody did that to me, I'd laugh. Go ahead. Put some SpongeBob square pants, freaking crying eyes on me. See my response. I will laugh with you because it's funny. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just funny. I can't download this stream yet, huh? I gotta actually kill it before I can actually download it. Anyone want to jump in here now that I'm done with a little tutorial? Copy, beast. Probably not going to stay much longer. Is it Monday night? Nothing really going on. I have to assemble a actual tutorial, but that won't take me. Got all the pictures. I just got to write, type up some text. That actually takes me longer than the videos. <laughs> not a good typer, if you haven't noticed. I'm a terrible speller and an even worse typist. What's even here? It says there's a whole six people watching. Hey, what's up, dude? Uh, just prepping wiring for the next part of my assembly. Cool. Uh, to give you an idea, that's 11 feet of 34 pin ribbon cable. Is that what you, how did, not a big fan of ribbon cable, but I'm not either, but I like the way. Did you see how the other one was done where I had it to where it's just one connector that clips together? Yeah, no, you, you showed it to me and I don't... I, I get it. I mean, for that, like, 
I mean, I end up stripping it down into like two, three, and four wire strands for what component it is, because that way, and then I'll wrap it with uh, wrap to protect it from the aluminum extrusion and everything. And it makes it roll, but it makes it make all the turns better once you break it up. Oh, I tried right. with the first one to kind of just roll it up like this, and oh, it doesn't want to bend in any direction, and it fights nah, you it's, it's got no flexibility at all. That's what I don't like about ribbon cables. It's so yeah. But for crimping on this yeah, connector on the end to be able to make a straight connection onto the circuit board, you can't beat it. So yeah, I mean that's why computers use them. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, and I mean, I can't say I totally. I stole two ideas from the CRX. I won't lie. One was the, the design of the uh, the fan ducts. I, I took their design and I tweaked it and I made it work for what I needed. And I'm actually using their 24 volt blower fans off the CRX. And the way they they have the same type of ribbon cable feeding the computer all the hot end, the uh, extruders and the hot end and the thermistors and the fans are all run through a ribbon cable like this on the CRX too. CRX. You mean the CR10X? No, it, actually, it's just a CRX. The CRX yep. is a CR10S, but it has a mixing nozzle and a slightly larger print bed. Who makes that? Creality. Oh, it's a Creality. They didn't make. They. It doesn't look. I don't think they made it for very long because I said it's got a. It's not a mixing nozzle, but it's a dual nozzle. It's oh, the it's mixing point is not in. The mixing board is not in carriage. It no, it's a it's a single hot no, it's a single nozzle. You know what a like an E three D Chimera? Yes. Yeah. All right. It, it, it's so it's the same thing that G Tech's doing now. Yeah. It, or not not a, not a Chimera, but a uh, no G Tech actually it blends at the right. the heat block on the CRX. It's just a uh, a cooling the cooling fins. Are tapered to where you can run one of the, you got to retract like 80 millimeters to switch filament. Yeah. But it gives you one hot end so you don't have to re, you know, get your two hot nozzles at the exact same height. Right. Just, you just got to do a retract and purge between each filament. Yeah. So it's more like what Cruz is doing with his, but just two color instead of five or four or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So right now I'm just measuring out. Well, all the yeah, Hopefully I have enough wire to finish this. It's it said my measuring technique. The aluminum extrusion is exactly three feet. I need eleven feet. Three. <laughs> Six. What's up, Michael? Drawings in here. Who's all in here now that I'm I... doing anything tutorial like? This part of the different things actually going to work yet. Let's see. I got 3D Medic, uh, oh, Viking, Michael, Minnesota Maker, and Trolling for Dollars is all the same, but I know it's more than that because Mac's here too and naked over here. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I have all my clothes on. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's just like Brian. I still, to this day, it's just, I don't know why. It's like, a shortcut. I always call him BVD if I'm talking to him. I just, I just like it now that almost every time Walter makes, like, I changed my uh, my avatar, and Walter's mad yeah. because he doesn't recognize it as easy now. You know, it screwed me up for a while, too. But everybody has, you know, nobody really jumped on NAC 3D Designs, but the minute I start teasing stuff with the White Knight, everybody's going nuts. So I'm going with the logo right now that people are paying attention to. So They're just paying attention because... But I do the same thing when I'm watching the chats. I kind of look at the logos real quick. Yeah. Yeah. The kind of you can identify it faster sometimes than trying to read all the names. And yeah, you eventually, learn to memorize them, and you know who they are. Eventually, I'm sure I'll change it back. But for with with Murph coming and everything, I wanted everybody to know. Yeah, I'm you know Nac 3D Designs. That's the White Knight. Come find me. The problem is, is like in the chat, it doesn't look good. Yeah. When it's all shrunken like that, you know what it looks like? Don't go there. <laughs> it kind of does, dude. But uh, 
Walter made some com every time Walter makes the comment, he picks me. He's like, all right, I don't know who this naked designs is. And a few seconds later, he'll go, I see that finger, put it down, Carl. Because I'm sitting yeah, I saw off that. on the stream the whole time. I'm like, he knows what I'm doing. Because the first time he did that, I was like, Walter, I know you can see my hand. He's like, Yeah, I know which finger you're holding up. <laughs> I always called the naked 3D design or naked designs too, way back, you know, when I first started and seeing you guys. Well, and Pooch, was, Pooch so started it. the whole point of it. Yeah, Pooch started it. He he totally thought that it was naked designs. Oh, and I had to put the spaces in so people got to know it's actually Knack 3D, Natasha and Carl 3D designs. Yeah, but I mean, you look at it, it looks like just, you know, like oh, yeah. Like it's, I mean, it looks like and, naked three, you know, naked designs. <laughs> I, I wrote the logo up and I wrote, I mean, in the way I did the logo, let me see if I've got one here somewhere. Yeah. I made the logo on my, I literally made the logo in Microsoft 3D Builder first. And I did this. So it was, so it was an AK 3D. That, and then I wrote designs underneath it. I'm like, okay, it's an act 3D designs. Didn't think anything of it until I wrote it out. Yeah. And I showed it to a friend of mine. He goes, so you're naked designs. I'm like, what? He goes, I thought that's what you were doing, a play on the 3D. I'm like, no, that was an accident. But then we thought about it. It's like, well, why get rid of it? Because people get it wrong. They go, oh, naked designs. And then I go, no, it's actually an act 3D. Are you going to forget it, though? Because no, one, I you got it. One, you thought naked yeah. designs. Two, I corrected you that it was wrong. But you're going to go back and go, it was Naked Designs. The E was a three. Oh, it's NAC 3D. That's right. But you're going to remember Naked Designs. You're going to go yeah, back yeah. and you're going to go, oh, I'm going to change that E to a three, and you've got me. It's just like Slicer, you know, with the three instead of the E. <laughs> I'm thinking, honestly, I need to start putting in my – on my tags. I think I need to start putting Naked Designs in all my tags for my videos and stuff. So if people type it wrong, it still brings them to me. Thank you for having clothes on. <laughs> oh, crap. Yeah, we're kind of glad he has that. I'd probably have booted him by now if he didn't have clothes on. Trust me, I'm not worth looking at. I wouldn't do that to you guys. Well, it couldn't be any worse than me. Look at me. I've gotten really fat this year. We now always gain some weight in the winter when it slows down. Wow. One of, one of my coworkers laughs. He goes, "Cause you, what do you weigh? I'm like 180. And I got the pot belly. If I sit and I just stand like this, he's like, dude, so when's the baby due? Oh, I can smoke that, dude. I said, I said, man, don't be making fun of my quarter keg here. I'm happy at 180. <laughs> or well, or I, I used to right now, I'm sure. I used to joke because everybody goes and buys six packs. Well, in Utah, the largest thing you can buy, you can't get kegs in Utah. The largest single container you can get in Utah is a party ball. I used to say this is my party ball. <laughs> party balls. We used to uh, get back in. Can't even get them around here no more. That's funny because party balls used to be the thing to get. We started getting party balls because we used to be able to buy the tap. You didn't have to rent them. You didn't want to buy a tap for a regular keg because they were like a hundred bucks. The, the little plastic party ball taps were like ten bucks, so we'd buy them and not rent them. Then you can go get the party balls, get two or three of those instead of a keg. You know, we're talking before I was legal drinking. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> I, I was teasing. I was teasing Mike the other night. He saw this much of it, and I said, "Here you go, Mike. We're here. We're going to show you top printing speed. Are you ready?" Like, yeah, don't we wish the roller moved that fast and actually laid a print down? Yeah, can't even see it roll in the video. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's just glaring. I mean, it's been nice and smooth and true, and it's like, yeah, it's never going to go that fast. You're lucky I'm to see like, it move. I'm like five foot eight and probably 205. Let's look. I got my scale right here. Let's see how just how fat I am. <laughs> Six foot two. Holy crap. Michael Castle, six foot one eighty five. Three D printing Viking is six two two oh seven. I am five eleven one eighty eight. I think the last time I stepped on a scale. 
I'm like five eight, five nine, and I just I'm at two oh eight. I gotta stop eating. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I my summer weight is around two seventy five to two eighty five, depending on what job I'm doing that month. <laughs> I easily yeah, and like next month I'll drop ten pounds. May I'll drop fifteen or twenty pounds easy. When I start working again, I just lose weight instantly. Spiral loom. That's all I need for the moment. I'm probably going to start a new job this week, and I don't even know if I want to take it. <laughs> but did you uh, see? Uh, Trying to think what he got. Uh, Casa de Wacos can't go to Murph now, or at least he can't go until Saturday. I can't go at all. I posted. Yeah. He had planned on going. We were all picking him. He would planned on going, and two people at his job quit. So his boss told him he, he canceled his vacation because two other people quit. Me and David Randolph were both like, I go to the boss and go, you want three people to quit? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got two years to retirement. I can't afford to do that yet. <laughs> but I was like, man, that sucks. Yeah, that's funny that yeah, you say that, Viking, because uh, actually when I first start working, I usually put on weight for that first week or two. I'll actually take on another 5 or 10 pounds, and then I'll start dropping. So you build the muscle up first, and then you start burning off the fat. It's so funny because all during high school and, and stuff like that, I was like 135, 140 pounds. I, I weighed a buck 27 until I turned 25. Yeah. It didn't matter if I ate a whole pizza, yeah. chugged a whole soda. You every time I'd step on the scale, buck twenty I used to make bets with the uh in the military you had to go weigh in every so often do random weigh ins. Yeah. I'd walk in and I'd be like, How much you want to bet it reads one twenty seven? I got to the point where the one guy at the early room would like I'd walk in there and he'd be like, Never mind, one twenty seven. At least three times they skipped my weighing because they took one look at me. They knew I wasn't anywhere close to max. They like, you still weigh 127? Yep. All right. Have a nice that's day. A, that's almost too light to be in the military. When I first joined, there was a – they got rid of it. There used to be a minimum weight standard. At my height, the minimum weight standard was 124. I got the basic training, and they marched us and worked us so hard that first week I dropped to 123. I hit the scale and the instructor flipped out. For some reason they timed out you do it for stop spamming caps. What all he said was piece oh, of because he because he did Carl. Oh, it doesn't even show that. Else. That's what kind of pisses me off is it doesn't let me decide if I want to hold that. Yeah, you can go in and you can tweak it the, the settings for it though. Yeah. It, it, that's there if people it's go crazy cactus, to figure out how to do all that crap it took me a month and a half to figure out how to turn a damn thing on <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what you get for yelling at me john <sighs> you get put in time out for five whole seconds <laughs> <laughs> you know it's so funny is in high school i used to write code granted it was only basic and crap but I used to be like a real computer whiz, like Macs, PCs, Commodores, all that. I played with them. I'm, you know, I wouldn't say I was anything great at them or anything, but you know, I could dick around with them. I wrote code to some extent. Now I look at them, and I'm like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta like enter a password. I don't want yeah. to do that much. <laughs> I, I did, I did basic and Q basic in high school, and the only thing that was cool about us learning basic was when. Windows came out and you still had to write auto exec bat files and batch files and stuff. That was basic. Like, yeah. dude, I can do this. Yeah, no, it was easy. I had I had a boss. I wrote the first virus that Hill Air Force Base had by accident. Cool. He uh are, he's, like, <laughs> he's like I said, you can reprogram every single keystroke on a keyboard. He's like, prove it. Okay. So I wrote a batch file. That reprogrammed every single keystroke on the keyboard to include Control Alt Delete, Alt Escape, all of them. It's like a hundred and forty-five different keystroke possibilities that a keyboard would recognize. 
Program them all to say not exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, because that was the big thing to say back then. Yeah. Not. So yeah. as a joke, yeah. as a joke, I made up a bootable floppy that would go in and rename the auto exec file to auto exec old and replace the auto exec with my batch file. So I booted his computer up with it. He starts typing. It's just not, 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 not. Well, a couple of people, a couple of my co-workers thought it was funny and they copied the floppy disk when I wasn't looking and more copies got made. It got loaded all across the comm squadron. I spent a week fixing all the, I had to make a boot disk to fix all of them. Spent a week getting it off the comm squadron. Then we start getting calls for the not virus outside of the squadron because the disk got copied and left the building. I spent a year tracking down copies of that stupid floppy disk to take it I, off of computers. I designed a video game. It was really popular at school. Oh? It was so stupid. <laughs> it was a little tree with a hole in it, and a squirrel would pop up in the hole. And you drove up with a tank, <laughs> and you tried to shoot the squirrel when his head was showing. <laughs> you had to, like, hit the shoot button as the squirrel was. And there was, you know, you had to align it. There was only a little bit because he could, you know, the hole was bigger than the squirrel, so he could move up and down, and you could miss him even if you hit the hole. You had to like shoot the squirrel with a tank. <laughs> I did a, uh, I did a Garfield comic, and I drew, I did it as you know, I drew the te the graphics on the screen. It, I did it all in four next statements. So it's like one line, one line of bar at a time, and it would draw out the Garfield oh, yeah, character in the words. Those, yeah, because on the Mac it was draw and next draw. Yeah, it would be. It would draw the line to do animation. It would draw the line, and then it would erase the line and draw it in the back. Right? Yeah. You know, you draw it in the front, erase the back. Draw it in the front, erase the back, and that would make it move across the screen. And draw apparently, it, John, apparently, John's heckling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at my new socks, traction socks. Aren't they awesome? Okay, uh, put your foot down. I can tell it from here. <laughs> They're actually clean. They just came out of the wash. Yeah. They're brand new. I just, just got them, I don't know, last week. See, now, now, if John was a really good guy, he'd just find the link up in the in the chat, and he'd join in with us, too, instead of just sitting here, you know, throwing random comments at me in the, in the chat, you know. Sometimes it's more fun to just sit in the chat and harass. <laughs> You know how that is. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was being serious. It was a great story. It actually was a good story. <laughs> Thank you. It was very unusual for Carl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's it. No, uh, more sneak, no more sneak peeks of the belt printer for you. I'm putting it away. <laughs> yeah, it's old news anyways. We've all seen it. <laughs> You're cut off. I can become a troll. <coughs> I joke with Walter all the time. I troll him just enough to make him flip me off during a stream, and then I stop. Yeah, I harass him on occasion. It, 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 I always joke with him. It's my goal to see how long it takes before he... Uh, uh, it, it, it's got a point out he won't even acknowledge it. He'll just look over, and you can tell. He'll look over, he'll read something, and the finger pops up for a second and disappears again, and I know he saw my comment. Yeah, you and Robbie Mac. Robbie Mac likes doing that too. He's good at pissing them off. <laughs> I do too. He just ignores me though. And and of course, it's really it, it, I, anybody wants to know how to get banned from Walter's channel. All you have to do is say something sexual toward Regina. <laughs> Some guy said something about hitting it, and he was like, "Yep." Bam, that quick. I'm like, ooh, yeah, that's don't touch that subject. No, well, that's just rude and obnoxious and employed anyways. Oh, yeah. That's the fastest I've ever banned somebody, though. <laughs> the, the trolls that leave the stupid, you know, all praise be to Allah comments will get two or three comments, and that guy got one comment, and Walter was on it. <laughs> yeah, who are all these ones that give them all the thumbs down that are his arch enemies now? I don't even know who the hell it is. I have no idea. 
Not that I really it, care. It, it was probably it was someone who was on the stream on his streams back at the beginning used to just troll him during the streams, I guess, and he got fed up and started kicking him. And I think he keeps making up bogus names just to put thumbs. Yeah, like me. Someone actually gave me a thumbs down on this. Whoop dee do. It's like I don't care. I've got I've gotten one thumbs down on a stream and I'm pretty or on a one of my videos and I'm pretty sure it's the oh, longest no. video I have. No, I think it's because they didn't like the length. I I just don't care. If, if I was doing this for like a living or something, that would be a different story, but this is just stupid. It's like going to the pub for me now. <laughs> you know, and hanging out with my friends. Yeah, I'm sure any thumbs down you get on this stream will be at my be my fault. So Yeah. No, not necessarily. <laughs> I'm not the easiest person I want to be along with generally. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. I still say you need to try and find a way to hook up with Mike and ride to Murph with him, but before you give up your reservation. I, I already had a ride. The ride isn't the problem. I can't afford it. Plain and simple. I had a ride with Uncle Ron. Uncle Ron drives right by me. He's going to come off when he's taking the ferry. He's going to come out five miles away from my house. Driving right by. But uh, I can't afford to go. I can't afford the room. I can't afford you know, any of it. I can't afford food. I can't just can't afford to go at this point. Too many emergencies. I was gonna say, if you want to, freaking discovered another water line. My whole, all the watering in this house, house is forty years old. It's just, it's at that age where everything is falling apart at the same time. That's the problem. Mm. I just found another water leak. It's minor, and I'm gonna have to fix it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping all this rain and snow stops before Murph, because if I'm not here to keep changing out the towels. I'm going to come back and I'm going to have half inch of water all over the floor of my maker space when I get back. That, that I wouldn't tolerate. That, that I'd have to freaking, I'd put. I said, it, it hasn't been like this in the eight years I've lived in here. It, But this year it's just been so wet. It's my front yard's a swamp. It's never been like this. Yeah, but you, you can drain that. That's, that's not even that difficult. Now, the problem is, is I can't get it to stay. It hasn't dried out long enough for me to put more dirt out there and, and finish landscaping it. The problem is I got low spots from when I redid the front yard for the walkway and the porch. Yeah. And the rain came before I got a chance to finish putting the dirt in and grading it and, you know, getting it all right. And right now, I, all I do is be throwing dirt in a mud puddle. It's still better <laughs> at this point. You throw sand in there, it'll fill it up and the water won't stay there. If you're getting water in your basement, for one, you got a hole somewhere, obviously. Yes. So it's not just grading it. I mean, grading it is going to help keep it from getting into the, that area of the ground anyways. But you need to put proper footing drains in. Yeah. The problem is to do that, I have to tear out all the paneling and everything else that's in this room and do it all no, over. Do it outside. You want it outside. That, that costs you want money. Get water before it gets into the house, not after it's already in the house. I, I, but that costs money, too. Not really. <laughs> and right it's really now, not, dude. It, it's I'll not tell you, that right, hard. I mean, how much right now, I would do it. Time? I'd be afraid to do it right now, though. As saturated as all the ground is around here, you'd take a swipe with a bucket. I'm pretty sure my whole front yard would just slide right back against the house. Yeah. How uh, how much of your foundation is out of the ground? At the front, not even a foot. At the back, about three feet, maybe four. And, the, and it pitches to the back? Yeah. Then you could actually just drive a freaking six foot pipe in like every 10 feet and it will alleviate a lot of it. Hmm. You literally drive it in the ground. Drive and, it pump, ground. and pump from it or? No, you just drive a freaking whole pipe into the ground, sharpen it up, literally take a sledgehammer, drive it in the ground. As long as it's soft, you know, I'm assuming it's backfill, so it's soft. Yeah. You just hammer it into the ground, and just when you get to ground level, you, you tee them all together. And the water will, before it will go into your foundation, will come up into that pipe and shed out. Water will always take the easiest path of travel. Hmm. It's temporary. It's not going to get yeah. rid of all of it because the, the pipe needs to be down at the footing. Yeah. 
Because I'm assuming that's where you're leaking. If you're you're leaking in your basement, you're either leaking on an obvious crack, which you'll see if you can see the concrete, or you're leaking yeah. at the joint between the actual concrete wall of the foundation and the footing. It's the only yeah. place that can leak. That's the only cold yeah, roll team. If this room wasn't finished, I would have probably I'd have probably done it the way they did the other side of the, the basement. And I would have gone ahead and just gotten a cut saw and I'd have cut one yeah, foot around different. the wall. Dug yeah, it out I'm not a fan of that because you're, you're still saturating your foundation, which means your concrete's going to deteriorate, pop, pop, pop. You still have mold problems. You need to keep the water from ever getting into the house. You need to stop it before it gets into the house, not yeah. handle it once it's in there. French drains are not as good as a proper footing drain. Yeah, unfortunately, right now, like I said, if this rain never stops, so there's no way anybody's ever digging out the – the, the leading edge of my house. <laughs> you can do it by hand. I've done it. No, I'm saying right now it would just cave in on you. Yeah, but you can do it by hand. I just do six foot sections. Get twelve foot pipe, cut it in half. Do six foot sections. Just slowly work at it. It's a pain. Don't get me wrong. It's obnoxious, but it's not. It's not even that hard. Again, if it's nice backfill, if it's all bouldery and rocks and all that, screw that. But if it's just standard backfill from around the foundation when they built the house. I'm pretty sure it's mostly clay. Did you ever see a llama? Kiss a llama. A llama llama taste a llama 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 duck. <laughs> Do you see the llama llama duck song? No, I haven't seen that. You got to see the llama llama duck song. It's funny as hell. Oh. Llama llama duck. I keep trying to knock out one section of this printer every day. Hopefully, I get it done. I'm hoping to get it. Two minutes of the huh? <laughs> Yeah. What? It's actually, just so you guys know the history, it's actually an old English children's song from, I guess, way back. Way back. And it's a llama llama duck song. And it's all about having a llama and eating cheesecake and, you know, using a guardrail and, uh, you know, Llamas and ducks. Okay. <laughs> so llama llama duck song. Sounds like some sounds like a messed up version of singing something from Greece. I think I where did I put oh I posted on Twitter, didn't I? <laughs> oh. oh and I missed that. Apparently trolling for dollars is a fan of you and me as well as Walter. This is a different one, but it'll work. It's the same song. It's just a different video. Poor Trolling for Dollars is a fan of mine. I feel sorry for him already. <laughs> Here you go, Minnesota Maker. Go watch that. <laughs> you can watch it, Carl. Go ahead. If you haven't seen it, watch that. It's only like a minute or two. You will, you'll just piss your pants laughing. Oh, uh, wait, then, because I don't want to do that on the live stream. It's so stupid. I, I, I forced mean, it up already. I don't need to piss my pants on it, too. It's stupid. But the guy that sings it, he's got this like, nee, 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 voice. I mean, they, it's obviously synthesized or something, but uh, it's so fast. I mean, you can barely understand what he's saying. He's singing so fast. <sighs> yeah, way back, I actually learned about that from. Uh, Way back when I had an Xbox, God, probably 20 or 15 years ago when they first came out with the original Xbox. They started playing, you know, all the Call of Duties and all of that, back mm -hmm. like Call of Duty 1. <laughs> and started hanging out with some of the guys, you know, from England and around the world, because that's what you do when you start getting into that crap. And uh, we were, like, shooting, playing Call of Duty, shooting people. Dude, that's when the headphones just started becoming popular or anything. Also, when these dudes is singing this llama llama duck song while we're killing people, it's like llama llama duck, llama llama duck, llama llama duck. I was like, what the hell are you singing? And then he linked that to me. He's like, oh, it's llama llama duck song. It's like a child's, you know, kid song. Yeah. I was like, wow, I'd never heard of that before. He was like, but you're a llama. You must have heard the llama llama duck song. I'm like, no, never had. That's pretty funny, though. <laughs> it is funny. I mean, it's stupid, but it's funny. Oh. 
Lama lama duck. What do I do with the other window? I don't know what went away. Uh oh. Losing windows now. You know what's funny? I get almost nobody's notification when they go live. But now all of a sudden YouTube notifies me when I go live. It's like, I know I'm live. I'm the one going live. Why are you telling me I'm going live? I always get a kick out of the fact that, uh, cause I have my personal account and then I've got the NAC 3d account. I really need to unfollow myself from the personal account. Cause I, it cracks me up. It'll say NAC 3d just commented. And I'm like, I posted that yesterday, you stupid. Yeah. You know, Twitter's like a whole day behind. Nag 3D just published this. And I'm like, no, I didn't. I should bring back all that. I should start using my other accounts. I really want to get my Tom Lama account back. Let's figure out how I can pull that off. I have my original YouTube account was Tom Lama, which I was going to make this, but I did it when I had. Uh, uh, my internet service was Faster Mac. That's how long ago it was. You guys know who Faster Mac is. They were a service provider for the internet. And uh, they were a dial-up. That's how long ago that was. And I did all these videos from it. And then I went to, I don't even remember who. I think it was AT&T for, for a you know, service provider. Because yeah. they, they went under. Well, Faster Mac closed up. So I had to go to someone else, went to AT&T for a dial-up, and then started doing the DSL. Then, like, a year later, I went back to try and, you know, get access to the YouTube because, you know, I wasn't doing a lot then. And I couldn't remember the password. Well, they only would do the password to the original email. Well, the original email doesn't exist anymore. But yeah. I'm going to get the, the reset password email thing. And, God, I tried for months to get that back, and they just wouldn't do it. They're like, oh, no, there's no proof. It's like, look at my mug. <laughs> it's me. I'm in the video because it was most of it was mountain biking videos when I was doing mountain biking crap. So you can see me in it. It's like me. Look, see, this is me. I want access to my account. Nope, can't do it. That's like without, my space. Without the little password link, we'll send the link to your original email address. That email exists doesn't. That email address doesn't exist anymore. There is no fastermac.com anymore. You will just get a bounce. Yep, I've tried. I've tried getting back into my MySpace account so many times. It's not even funny. I've used every password I know that I've ever used. It won't let me in. Yep. I put in the email address that it says is the right email address, and it says we sent you a password reset. I never get the password reset notification. Yeah. And it's like I can't get into it. I just want to download all my files back up. It's I got Christmas videos I posted of my daughter that are up on there. I know I have them somewhere else, but I know they're there. That's what I hate about all this cloud crap. Everyone, they're all ranting and raving. Oh, the cloud's great. The cloud's great. I hate the freaking cloud. I can't even. I originally got, I might go to a droid phone because I don't think this is any better and they're so much more expensive. And I can get a better quality phone for less money if, by going to a droid. Because I originally went to, I've done both. And I went to the iPhone because I have Macs. And they just yeah. linked better. I really didn't care which one I used. The droids were fine. I liked them. They were a little confusing to me because I wasn't used to them, but there's nothing wrong with a droid. Didn't like Windows phones at all. Those things are garbage, but the droid phones are fine. But now Apple won't link to the computer anymore. It's all through the iCloud. You have to iCloud yep. it. I can't just download my files onto my computer. I want I just I don't want your damn cloud. I want nothing to do with your cloud. I want to pull it off my phone onto my computer. That's all I want to do. I want to back up onto my computer. That way, if I drop the phone in a mud puddle, I can bring it home. I don't want to have to go to your cloud. For one, you know, I live on the shoreline, and I don't know if anyone realizes, but internet signals and all that crap is terrible around here. It's just there's always storms. There's always phone lines, cable lines. I don't care what it is. When you live on the shore, unless you're on a big city, this is a, you know, it's a beach town. It's really popular on the beach. We have like 100,000 people, but this time of year we got like 10,000 people living in town. But it's they don't service it. They don't care. Yeah. So my internet sucks. I mean, it's just terrible. I pay top dollar and I got half of what everybody else does. 
just because of my location, because it's right, you know, right on the shoreline, and they just won't keep patching the wires. Every time we have a storm, the wires all come down. I don't want the cloud. It's unreliable. Yeah. It's just like Comcast went to the freaking DVR clouds, cloud DVR. I don't want my DVR cloud. You know the number one time I want to use my damn DVR? When the cable's down. <laughs> now I can't use it because it's a freaking DVR cloud, cloud-based DVR. So when the cable goes out, which Comcast goes out three or four times a month easy yeah. for a day, I can't watch anything. I mean, I literally used to set up my DVR for times when the cable's out. Now I can't do it. It's all cloud-based. So the cable goes out. I can't watch my DVR anymore. It's just stupid. The whole point of a DVR is not to have to be attached. Yeah, yeah. I went rounds with my – the only problem I've had with my cable since I moved in is I've got one channel, and it's a uh, Comet. It's not even HD, but if I tune it in on any of the TVs in my house, it'll play good for a little while. Then it starts to get grainy. Then I'll lose sound. Then the picture will stop, and then it'll start all over again. And I've had them come out and check it, and they're like, oh. They'll check it at there, and oh, yeah, the channel's working just fine here. They'll get out here, and they'll go. It's oh, you've got de good signal strength coming in on your cable, but that one channel won't hold sync. I'm like, yeah, it's at your end. I know it's at your end because all the other channels work fine. It's got to be your end. There's no way I've got 300 channels that work and Comet doesn't, and it's my end. But they still want to send a service technician out to test my end to make sure the problem's not here. I'm like, I and I got to the point where I told the guy, I said, what logic in any world says if I have two different TVs in my house that do the exact same thing, two different cable boxes, and it's that's the only channel that does it, that it's my end that's causing the problem. <laughs> Stupid logic? Like most of them? Auto, we want to make sure. We want to blame on you logic. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. They came out, they troubleshot, and you know what they said? They said they can't make that channel work for me. So give me my money back. Yeah, <laughs> I really want to. I wish I was like, like the dude from Virgin Mobile and all of those. If I had that kind of money where I could just start companies, I would start a cable company. And I wouldn't even start a cable company. I would start an internet company with television streaming, which is what Comcast is now. People don't realize if you've got Comcast and you're watching Comcast cable, you're watching Comcast cable is now streaming, like getting any of the streaming services. Comcast cable is a streaming service now. You just have a cable box that pulls it off the thing instead of your computer and a modem. But anyways, um, I would start a cable company or a internet company with streaming service and allow you to pick and choose any channels you want. It's like 50 cents a channel. And you know, for six bucks, you get 12 channels, any channels you want. None of these, well, Here's our package, and you get these, you know, you want one channel. You want yeah. ESPN. To get ESPN with Comcast, I have to get all the freaking NFL channels, which I have zero interest in. I have to get all the racing channels, which is sort of, you know, if they're there, I'll watch them, but wouldn't pay for them. Um, I mean, you end up getting these, like, 25 or 30 channels you want nothing about to get one. Yeah. I mean, I want my locals. I want my your basic cables, your TVSs and the – those are all fun to watch on general occasions. They're actually getting better these days. I want like Comedy Central. That's another one. To get Comedy Central, you got to have this like huge package of other crap you don't want. Yeah. I could probably want... do it in under 20 channels. Oh, yeah. I got my, I got the, the favorites cut down, and I think there's like 15 channels. And I wish you could go in. Over HBO, HBO2, Cinemax, <laughs> Showtime. Those I wish you could go them. into the cable guide and block all the ones you like. I hate the fact that I can go through and it shows me every channel out there. And I go, oh, I like that show. And I'll, it's one of the ones I don't, you know, there's typically I can tune in everything up to say like channel 155. And then between that and 165, there's like three or four more channels that I get. And I'm too lazy to sit there and up channel, 
Black screen, black screen. Nope, I don't get that one. Up channel. Wait to see which ones tune who, in. Who and other ones I get. What's that? Who's your provider? Armstrong. Never heard of him. Yeah. They're, they literally have like a 20 mile radius around this town called Rising Sun. That is, and they, they service this 20 mile radius around Rising Sun that I happen to fall into. And everywhere else around us is Xfinity. Yeah. You're probably better off without it. And okay. I can't get okay. Xfinity. Okay. Well, everyone used to bitch about Adelphia because we were Adelphia up until about five or six years ago, which is what I originally got was Adelphia. And then Comcast bought them out. And it's been worse ever since. Within a month of Comcast owning it, it's gone way downhill. Everyone's like, oh, Adelphia is so small. And they don't have this and they don't have that. It's like, yeah, but who cares? It's all the crap nobody wants to watch anyways. Uh, the only thing oddball I'd want to keep that, you know, is in all these packages are, like, all the history and discovery channels. Yeah. And, uh, that's the other one. I, I have to be in, like, the third tier package to get those. And I don't want all the crap in the second tier. I want the bottom of the line, your, your local channels, your TBSs, your, you know, whatever, the half a dozen cable-based channels like TBS and what's the other one? TNT and those cable-based ones. All that crap in the middle, I don't want. And then I want history, discovery, DIY. DIY, you have to have this like huge package just to get the DIY channel. Why? Because they know people want it, and they'll pay for all that other junk. This is the first time I've seen this user. Oddsball. Yeah, he was in here earlier today. I've never heard him before, but sure, whatever. It's like we, we talked about oddball cable companies, and he's like, did someone call my name? I'm like, well, I didn't know you existed. No, but hi. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, apparently Armstrong's wherever uh, I can't remember where Michael Castle said he was at what Kentucky I'm sure he'll refresh my memory where he's at yeah we were at Delphia until I don't know five six years ago Comcast bought him out uh, Delphia was much less yeah, there was, there, I think Delphia had 100 channels that's all they had but they were all the good ones that's all he wanted and it was cheaper Dude, I like, Comcast, I I've had them now because they consider my years with, with Adelphia because I had four or five years in Adelphia and then five years since Comcast took them over. They just raised my bill $75 freaking dollars a month. Oh, so when, when I moved in, I my, my, my cable, I have cable, internet, and I have the fastest personal internet you know you can get without going to business. Okay. Um, every cable channel there is because... I live with my two old parents, and that's all I do is watch TV, so I have to have every channel in the world, including all the HBOs and Showtimes. Um, and my phone, and it's 290 bucks a month. Yeah, when I moved in, ridiculous. I wanted, I said I wanted the DVR, because I wanted to be record shows, I wanted HD TV, and all the HD channels. And I didn't want any pay channels, I just, but I said I wanted to be able to have Sci-Fi and Discovery Channel and Velocity. Yeah. Stuff like that, which put me in the next tier package. I was at like a hundred and five dollars when I moved in eight years ago. I'm up to a hundred and eighty nine dollars a month, and I haven't added anything just because of the your introductory rate and everything else going yeah, away. That's what they did to me. They they kept because it used to be you sign up for your two or three year package and you get a deal. Yeah. And at the end of that, they'd raise the price and you'd get that next bill and you'd be like, holy crap. And then you call them up and you go, well, give me the package back. And they're like, well, you know, two or three year contract. I'd be like, it's all okay as long as it's that spur. But they won't even do that anymore. They're like, you've been doing it too long. We can't give you the packages. The, the only way you like, can do it what? now is to leave them, go to yeah. another provider and come back. The only problem is the only way I can go to another provider, I got to put a satellite dish on my roof. Yeah. See, I don't, I did the satellite dishes and especially here in New England, they're terrible. I, I did it for, the five years I was stationed overseas just to get Armed Forces Network, and I hated it because every time there'd be any kind of rain or thunderstorm, yeah. there goes your signal. Forget about yeah. it. And that, that's the other thing, especially, again, here in New England. You get a big-ass blizzard. You're stuck in the house. All you want to do for the next, you know, 24 or 48 hours is watch TV because it's blizzard out. Yep. And you can't watch TV because the satellite dish is blocked. Yeah, the, the only reason I would have kept my satellite dish, and I had a look at all the, uh, 
there's like 10 or 12 Armed Forces Network satellites. Whoever laid them out did a damn good job because their signal coverage skirts the very, it misses the coast by like 10 miles of the United States. Still covers all of Europe and everywhere else, but their coverage skirts to where it just misses. So even if you're on the, the very edge of the coast of the continent, you can't add set up a Armed Forces Network satellite and catch AFN here in the States. Yeah. You know, DirecTV just came out with the uh, DirecTV Now, which is a streaming service. So you just need an internet connection. So it's like, uh, what's that one that they keep saying sounds like a porn thing? Sling. Sling, yeah. So I guess it's like Sling, but looking at it, the channel lineup is way better. All your locals are in it, and it's like half the price of all the other ones. And well, it's, 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 What's that? 3D Print Vikings heading out, just saying goodbye to him. I just know Diggy Dad stopped it. Let's see, my AT&T fiber is supposed to be guaranteed soon. Yeah, see, I have the same problem because not only am I on the shoreline where they regularly don't bother fixing the cable because it's a shoreline and the next time we have a a high wind, it's going to come down again. But I also have a half a mile of copper because our it's all fiber optic to the end of my driveway. But then coming up the driveway is copper. Well, my driveway is almost half a mile long. <laughs> so my internet at the pole out on the street is awesome. I get, I don't know, one billion bits per second. Where here I get like nothing. And I'm paying for the top of the line. But if I get anything slower, it just gets slower because it's copper. So I have to pay for the top of the line internet service to get mediocre, medium, almost bottom of the line actual service up to the house, which is just wrong. That's the one thing I like about where I'm at. There's not a lot of houses on this street and in this neighborhood. It's not real, real jam packed with apartment buildings or anything. Cause you read through those contracts and they always tell you you're guaranteed the capability of this much to your house, but all depends on local area usage. If everybody around you gets home from work at the same time and they all jump on and they all start using their internet, guess what? Yeah. You get clipped because they got to spread your bandwidth out to everybody. Yeah. They're all spreading my bandwidth out to 20 houses near me. DSL. Even when everyone gets on it, it's still better than DSL. DSL, I, I mean, when DSL first came out, it was nice compared to, cause it was either dial up or DSL around here, and the DSL was nice. Cable, it's still better. <laughs> I was like, they talk now. I start Armstrong started airing commercials for um, business internet. Yeah, uh, like ten. What is it? Ten terabytes or something? You know, terabytes a minute. It's some outrageous amount you can get with fiber direct to your house and everything else. And I'm like, or to your business. And I'm like, yeah, I wonder what that costs per month. You know, my boss who lives one house away. If you go through this closet, <laughs> through the window in this closet, you can see his window through the woods. I mean, it's he's at you know half a mile away. He's at the end of my driveway. Yeah, but he's literally right there. He did the business line for the business, and I was getting better internet up here than he was with the business line. Oh, he was paying three times as much. It was 180 bucks a month just for the business line internet. That didn't include the business line phones and all of that. Yeah. And he finally called him up and said, uh, you know, I'm paying all this money to have so-called faster internet. And this is Comcast. He's like, why am I paying all this money for the faster internet that's not faster? And we can prove it. We can go up to my neighbor's house who works for me and go back and forth. And, you know, we've done a whole speed test and it's faster here than it was there. And they're like, well, you're not really paying for the speed. The speed is just a way to advertise it. Sometimes you get better speed. You're really just paying for the service. If you call... We will be there within 24 hours. He's like, really? I'm going to pay three times as much. You know what? If I have a personal line and I call and you're not here within 24 hours, I just deduct it off the bill anyway. So what's the difference? So he cancels the business line. The business line with, with Comcast was stupid. He yeah. was paying more for the internet and the phone than I was paying for my internet, phone, um, cable, everything all put together. He was paying like $325 for just the internet and his phones. 
he did have multiple phones. I mean, we had three phones in the office, plus one out in the shop, so four. We had four phone lines, but they're 20, with the personal, if you get the personal phone lines, it's 29 bucks to have it with Comcast, and then every additional line, up to four additional lines, are nine bucks. Hey, Brian. They're like, oh, we got better services with the business. It's like, yeah, but none of them are any good. They're not better. They're pointless. What's up, Brian? He's making his way down the list. Yeah. (laughs) So, anyways, what time is it? Holy crap, 29 already. Yep. Uh, I I haven't eaten dinner yet. Yeah, well, you know, it's even worse. Is I was up late last night, had to get up very early this morning because we got another slush storm. No, we don't get snowstorms. We get slush storms here. Oh, we got the same thing here. Yeah, well, I got six inches of it, and I had to show uh, it because we got about three, I think. My uh, my neighbor usually plows. He's got an old beat up pickup truck that he built a. It's a plywood plow, and it works just beautiful on our dirt driveway because we have a shared <laughs> driveway. Um. He actually lives even farther back. He's behind me. But anyways, he usually plows it with this plywood plow. It worked. It actually works on the dirt driveway better than a regular one. We had a regular plow, and the plywood actually works better on the dirt, believe it or not. It cut, you know, cuts. Anyway, um, they went on a cruise. Well, he left me the keys, but the slush is so thick, I think I broke his truck. So I just stopped using it. <laughs> so I literally did one pass up the driveway and one back, and the thing was bucking, and the plow was all twisted. I'm like, I don't know how he built this thing, and could, could I fix it? Yeah, but it's not mine, you know. Yeah. You know, if he was here and he said, "Go ahead, fix it," that would be one thing. But he's not here; he's gone. You know, so I'm not going to screw with it. So I mean, he left me the keys because he knew it was going to storm, and he knew I'd want to use it. But I'm not going to screw with the thing. I mean, it's a beat-up old truck. There's, the windows are broken out, and it's got plastic bags in the windows and crap. I mean, it's just a junk truck, but I'm still, it's not mine, so I'm not going to screw with it. So I just did the one pass up and down the driveway. It started running like crap, and the, I think the plow broke. I think one of Because it's literally plywood and two-by-fours. That's all it is. I think one of the two-by-fours mounting it to the bumper is broken. I didn't even look. It just started acting weird, so I parked it and took the key out. So I was hand shoveling a half mile long driveway today. Oof. Of slush. That's what you get for living out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not out in the middle of nowhere. That's just it, dude. I'm on the shoreline in Connecticut. <laughs> it's actually highly populated. Half I'm mile doing, long driveway, yeah. though? Yeah, well, I'm in the middle of a swamp. There's a swamp on either side of us. The two of us, him and us, me, are on like a peninsula of swamp. There's a rivers that flow literally on either side. I got a pond behind us that way, actually. Is your house on stilts? No, I'm up with it. Actually, years and years ago, you want to know the whole story? This property was owned by my great great grandfather. And it actually was a, a local sand pit where he just let anybody come in. My whole property is sand. Mm. And he just let anybody come in and, you know, you come in with your truck if you needed sand like for a snowstorm or something you just came in and you took a shovel and you took a truck and you dug it out and there was companies that he let you know come in and take back hose and dig it out so as my property comes in from the road you hit a hill that's the old original dig out and it goes up like 100 feet up my driveway and then my house is up on that peak hmm. so we had it flooded here like a major flood like we were literally canoeing in to my house over cars and semi trucks. I have pictures from like the eighties when we had the major flood in 83 year and or 82 and we're canoeing over like cars and we're looking down at the roof in the water. <laughs> it's the and my house never year. gets touched. My house never gets touched because it's up on that pier. But what's even better is not only are we on a pier, but we're actually like a cowboy hat or a hat. Because my brim is here. This is my house. But the sidewalls, there's mountains on either side of me. So we're still protected. So nothing ever. We've had hurricanes here. And I keep my power and everything. Everyone else goes dead all around me. And I still have power, television, lights. Used to have the big, like, back in the 70s. 
we had the big, massive talking satellite dishes. My brother used to install those big, huge fiberglass 10-foot satellite dishes. We've had a couple of those on the roof with hurricanes. Never had a problem with them. <laughs> where, even though I'm literally right on the water, my end of my driveway, you come down my driveway, you hit the end of my driveway, you hit the road, Route 156, maybe 20 feet of swamp, train tracks, and then the sound, you're in the ocean. The end of my driveway is a quarter mile from, from waterfront. There's a little bit of swamp on the other side of the train tracks. And we never get whacked because the train tracks are built up because at the end of my driveway is a valley and the train tracks goes from either side. So that's all protected. My house never gets whacked, even though we're, I mean, it's, I've seen whole areas around here, like hundreds of houses just devastated, flattened. And my house is fine. <laughs> we built this in 1970, and here it stands. It has never burned down once. My brother burned it down, but it's never been stormed down. What's that? Oh, it wasn't reading. In a second. Brian was having fun going, I built a, a castle in the swamp, and it sank. I built a second one, and it sank. I built a third one, and it fell over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but that's the only problem here is we don't get snow, we get slush. It's and it's it was nasty today. I was out there. I literally went out for like an hour and had to come back in. My back was killing me, and then go back out for an hour and come back in, and go back out for an hour. I was in and out all. I started at five o'clock this morning, and I was still mm -hmm. shoveling it. I don't know. I think I came in about noon and gave out. And there's still sections on shovel, but we can get in and out. So. Problem is, is now it's going to freeze overnight, and we're supposed to get deadly freezing. So anything I didn't shovel isn't going to get shoveled, because <laughs> all that slush is just going to turn to ice. That's from Monty Python. And the, I thought it sounded familiar. It's been yeah. ages since I've watched Monty yeah. Python and the Holy Grail. You know, that's on. Uh, it's on Netflix. Is that what it is? I just watched it. Yeah, yeah I, I saw it the Netflix. other day on Netflix. I'm like, holy cow, it's on Netflix. You know what else is on Netflix? Both of the original um, uh, uh, Saints movies. Um, yeah, I noticed. Boon I noticed the first Boondock Saints was on. I didn't yeah, notice Boondock one. Saints. The second one just came out. You know, it was always there, but you had to pay for it, so I never watched it. I saw it when it originally came out, and I never watched it again. And it's on. It's on uh, Netflix now. Netflix or Amazon? It might be on Amazon Prime. Actually, I think it's on Amazon Prime. I don't use Amazon Prime, so it should be on Netflix. If I saw it, it was on Netflix. I'm pretty sure the, the Boondock Saints, they're, the original, the first movie is on both, but the second movie is now on Amazon Prime, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. It might be Netflix. I do Amazon Prime. I, I, I honestly get it more. I was going to cancel it. But I still buy through Amazon once in a while, but I watch it more. I watch the videos on Amazon more than I do anywhere else. No. I use, I use Amazon more than I do Netflix. I've used Amazon a few times here and there, and I tried Hulu once or twice, and I'm just getting mad at all these TV shows now trying to, like, uh, I'm a huge Star yeah. Trek fan, and it bugs me to no end yeah. Yeah. they want you to subscribe yeah. to whatever that channel is so you can watch Star Trek Discovery. I'm like, no, I wait for people to pirate it up on the internet, and I watch it. You know what I'm going to do is it's like season three now, and they've got a, uh, it used to be a week, and I think it's two weeks now. The, the free view where you watch it for free and I think I'll just watch I'll just do the two weeks free or a week free or whatever and I'll binge watch that discovery and then because that's the only thing I want to watch on it what's pissing me off is you're paying for the DVR if you're paying for the channel because you I don't know about you guys but we have to pay for our local channels local channels are not part of the Comcast package you know if you want your local channels it's 12 bucks now you get them all you get anything in the state and most of the states around you for us, but it's twelve bucks added to my Comcast bill. Wow. Well my my I'm paying for those, you know, CBS, NBC, PBSs. There's like four PBSs in the state. It's ridiculous. Small state or second small state in the freaking country, and we got four PBSs. But anyways, you're paying for all that. But now that CBS and FX and all of those have gone to the FX Now, which is the streaming service. Yeah. 
you can't you used to be able to go onto the DVR and onto there and just you know if you missed the show that night you could go back and watch it even if you didn't DVR it you could watch it on demand. Well now you got to pay if you on demand something on CBS you have to pay to watch it. Now I gotta agree with what Brian's saying. I don't think we have to pay for them down here. I think by law they have to provide them for us down here. Yeah no. It's like, yeah, if you got to pay for the channel, there shouldn't be commercials. Yeah, well, that's just it. That's what kind of bugs me about um, Hulu. When I beta tested for Hulu when they came out. Okay? So Hulu was actually, when they were beta testing, I actually liked it. And it was it was free, and you had commercials. Or you paid 5 bucks or four ninety nine a month, and you got no commercials. And I'm like, that's a cool deal, you know? Yeah. You can either watch the commercials and the commercials pay for the show, or you can pay for the show and not have commercials. That's a good option. Well, just before they went live, not baiting, you know, live, whatever you want to call it, live to the open yeah. market, they all of a sudden went to this oh, you have to pay all the time. There's no more free. And the commercials are still there. I was like, you know, bye. I am not. Paying for your streaming service and then have to watch a commercial. Yeah. One or the other. I guess Brian's saying you can still get no commercials, but you have to pay more for the no commercials option. Yeah. Well, it's just stupid. I'm just, I'm sorry. I I don't mind. I don't like commercials. And if I don't want to watch the commercial, I'm willing to pay not to have the commercials. I'm not willing to pay to have to watch the commercials also. One or the other, folks. That's like if I ever get to the point where I'm monetized on YouTube, I know Walter's stuck with it so far. I'm like, I refuse to, if I, I'll probably set it to where, yeah, there are commercials, but I refuse to make it to where you can't click the skip button. I hate when I hit somebody's video and they've locked it out so you can't skip the commercials. I'm like, make me watch a commercial half. It's like, they'll do like a 20 minute long video and put four commercial breaks in the middle. I'm like, man, you're just trying to make money. Oh, you YouTube, any yeah. of them. They, they do that, too. That's not even YouTube. They do that to make money. Well, so I'm saying, the person who set you can set up how many commercial breaks you have and whether they're skippable or not skippable. Yeah. Like, with, with countries, when you log in a stream now, you get that first commercial, but after three seconds, you can usually hit skip. Yeah. Which I usually do. Yeah. I just hate it now because... Minnesota Maker beats me into all the chats now because I got to you know, he he manages to hit skip before me I guess. <laughs> Him or uh, Jake from State Farm like very rarely do I get to make first on a stream anymore. Yeah, see Hulu, you you they still have the two right Brian, you could you could pay and have commercials or you could pay even more to not have commercials. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not paying to have commercials. See when I started Hulu Again, it was beta. They had free or paid. Free was with commercial, pay was without. That's the way it should be. You shouldn't have to pay to get commercials. And then pay more to not have commercials. Sorry, that don't work for me. Free, commercials, pay, no commercials. That's how it should be. It's not. It's what, unless they changed it again because everyone left. Because when we were all beta testing it, like 90% of all the people I was in contact, because we used to have a forum that talked about it when they were beta testing. And like the minute they went to that pay in commercials or pay more, did not have commercials, we all bailed. Everybody bailed. I said, screw you. There was a few people that said, okay, we'll pay more. It was like ridiculous. No, who you pay for Hulu no matter what. You can pay more and get rid of the commercials. But Hulu is never free. And if I'm watching a commercial, it better be free. All right. Well, I'm going to bust out of here. I'm going to go get some yeah, dinner. It's 9 o'clock. So, y'all have yeah, a great night. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. We're going to kill the stream here. Yeah, it's five minutes up, but who cares? Anyway, I gotta edit it all anyways and pull out. Actually, I might just leave it. <laughs> all right. Take it easy, everybody.
Thanks for stopping by. It's actually about this here Flappy Bird, which is what this whole stream started as. So you know how to build a Flappy Bird if you were lucky enough to uh, be part of the group that have access to the beta version of the files. But kiddos to bed. Later, Brian. Anyway, I'm going to kill it. Have fun, guys. Enjoy your Monday evening, what's left of it. And uh, later. <laughs>